Dear colleagues, thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to speak on this session on addressing the global burden of sepsis in children under five. I am very sorry I could not be there in person, but I truly appreciate uh, the effort that many of you have made to be there in Berlin, and I look forward to meeting you sometime in the future. Uh, what I'd like to speak about is uh, the overall burden of sepsis, and then speak about the many faces of sepsis and what can be done to address this, the need for advocacy, and then give some of my uh, final reflections. Uh, briefly, uh, the burden of sepsis, the importance of under five uh, children in the overall burden of sepsis is underlined by the fact that over 40% of the incident cases of sepsis and 26% of deaths occur in children under five. And one can see that the neonatal period and under five population is starkly uh, representative here. Moreover, the importance of addressing sepsis is that sepsis care is uh, uh, considered by many the bellwether for quality of care in health systems. So we get sepsis care right, we are getting health systems right. When I speak about the many faces of sepsis, I am speaking about the issue of uh, how we address the sustainable developmental goals such that we are uh, able, uh, best able to achieve success. And when we look at good health and well-being in the middle, we know that many things contribute to good health and well-being. And when it is specifically when it comes to sepsis, uh, the issue of no poverty or ending poverty, zero hunger, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation are all central to either inciting sepsis and control or improvement in these will certainly improve the outcomes in sepsis. And thus, um, to, uh, to decrease, uh, to achieve the sustainable developmental goal and improve uh, overall outcomes from sepsis, we need to have uh, access to safe and effective, affordable, affordable essential healthcare and vaccines and medicines for all, such that by 2030, we can end preventable deaths of newborn and children under five and reduce the mortality um, as shown um, here. There are no doubts that uh, there are too many children in the world who are dying. And the five scenarios to 2030 shows that there needs to be a concerted effort um, to achieve the sustainable developmental goal as compared to the um, stagnation or the usual path um, with different projections in the US and um, UN. Indeed, we have to think of sepsis beyond the double doors, as I say, think of it within institutions and the quality of care we give as clinicians, but in other facets too. There is no doubt that when we look at the journey of a child, they're delaying seeking care, they're delaying travel to health facilities, delay in and low quality of care in health facilities, lack of down referrals um, and discharge planning, and hence developmental delays and uh, death in the community. So to address these issues, we need to have uh, education of families and the public. We need to have just in time supports um, and advice. Transport services should be improved and the overall health services facility should be more robust with better triage system, better data capture, uh, prediction models, resources and personnel and supplies and leveraging frugal technology for both monitoring and uh, risk prediction models, and then optimal discharge and follow up in the community. This is one uh, narrow aspect, um, but a very important aspect to improve the overall outcome from sepsis. Moreover, there are many aspects that needs to be considered considerations when it comes to children worldwide, globally. There's the biology, pathogen-related, age-related previous therapies and genetic issues. 
There are also special population neonates, those with comorbidities such as malnutrition, HIV, TB, et cetera. The epidemiology and seasonal variation, which uh, varies from region to region and country to region. Timing of presentation, because uh, many of the presentation would um, occur in a community. And unless we have good primary, secondary, and tertiary care, rapid transfers, trial system, and appreciation of the progression of illness, we will not be able to make uh, any inroads into that. And of course, the resources, as I mentioned already. Thus, a holistic approach to sepsis care would involve many issues. It would involve, it, uh, based on the bedrock of appropriate ways of recognizing sepsis, implementation science to implement what we already know, training of the future leaders because they're death of healthcare uh, uh, clinicians across the world, data sharing networks and collaboration such that we learn from each other. And this would involve advocacy, prevention issues, uh, discovery in science, clinical care, population data, and innovations that are across the board. Um, so those are some of the issues that we need to address in many faces. We cannot achieve any of these unless we have advocacy. And as my, uh, Laurie Gard said, advocacy for global issues such as the pandemic, we need everyone on board, pharmaceutical industry, laboratory, government, health forces, um, elements of politics, sociology, economics, religion, psychology, etc. And it is for this reason that we have formed the various alliances, African, European, Asia, Pacific, Eastern, Mediterranean, and Latin uh, America to address these issues because sepsis at its core is a local issue. But um, we need to address it both at a global and local uh, issues. There are many things advocacy is needed for, for instance, preventable of um, uh, pneumonia deaths, the five countries that contribute most of the under five mortality from sepsis also contribute the most pneumonia deaths. And in many of those countries, you can see in India, Nigeria, Sub-Saharan Africa, et cetera, less than 40% of children have access to effective antimicrobial therapy. And this is not going to change because um, of better care, we need to advocate for services. The same as the COVID vaccine, we have seen um, uh, that the distribution is inequitable worldwide. Across the world, 67% are vaccinated, but in low-income countries, 21%, in Africa, 27%. We need to address these inequities. And we know the very same thing is happening with the monkeypox vaccine at the present time. There is no doubt that we have to think of sepsis in a more generic and broader sense. And indeed in children, formal education of parents have been considered as a social vaccine. Lower maternal and paternal education are both risk factors for childhood mortality. And if a mother is, uh, has high school education, um, her children has uh, under five has a 31% uh, less chance of mortality, 17% with fathers. And finally, some reflections that has been exposed by the asymmetry in global health as um, in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that uh, lack of diversity and inclusion, racism, patriarchy all needs to be addressed, not only in our own institution, but from a global point of view, to improve, uh, to decrease inequities and improve the outcomes across the world. Uh, the issue of decreasing the North-South divide is one, a very important aspect of decreasing the sepsis mortality and morbidity um, that we need, to, we need to focus on, put our laser gaze on that will make a difference. So I'd like to thank you very much. And I hope in the short time, I have given you a vast idea, a number of ideas that need to be addressed. They are not all of these that are within our realm uh, of as, as individuals, but as a collective group, I am certain we'll be able to achieve that. And I'd like to thank you for your time and look forward uh, to meeting you again in person. Um, thanks very much. Thank you.